Hi guys and welcome to my review of the Pula PA01. This is a single dynamic and it's from a brand that um, has been around for a couple of years, although they've been mainly focusing on building IEMs for other people, for other brands. So this is kind of their uh, in-house uh, product. Uh, a couple of years ago they had a couple of models known as the Ohms Acoustics Pula. Um, that was uh, an IEM that was very similar to in its shape and shell to the uh, Chipoan um, Melee and the Olina. Uh, I remember back then I even reviewed it and I said it was basically the, the, the Melee's brother and it had a kind of a very similar sound. Um, you know, the shell, everything kind of had a very similar sound going. Um, and anyway, they, they kind of just, just went silent for a while and now they've launched uh, the two IEMs, the PA01, which I've got to have for you, and the PA02, which is a OnePlus 4 hybrid. Anyway, um, when it comes to the actual presentation, it comes in a very, very basic presentation. This is what it brings. It brings no box, nothing, nothing, you know, no frills, nothing. This is what you get. It costs about $55.00. And you're greeted with this case, which is a nice case. I mean, this is false leather, but it's a nice case. And inside, we get uh, a nice selection of tips. Okay, I've swapped out the tips for the ones that work best for me. But the tips actually don't work bad. They, these, these, these orange ones here yeah, actually give a performance very comparable to the uh, to the um, KB Euro Sevens. Uh, and then it brings a, a cable. Which is, is nice, I mean it's not a bad cable, available either in 4.4 or 3.5. What I do like about the cable is the terminations, I mean the, the, the plug is very very nice, it's got the puller branding there and on the IEM side as well, very nice. And then the IEM itself of course. IEM, what is this? This is a resin shell, okay, it's got a 10mm uh, uh, LCP driver inside, fits very nicely, I mean uh, it's, it's kind of a, shell, a shape that we've seen already before. Uh, fits very nicely. You can just kind of, well, you can't really get a full glimpse of the of, of the uh, of what is inside because it's it's very very dark. But if you actually shine a, a very powerful light, you'll get kind of something. But anyway, you you can't really see you know clearly inside. And like I was saying, it's got a 10 millimeter LCP driver, which has got um, according to them uh, a, a, a fancy uh, voice coil. Uh, and also a very strong uh, magnetic structure, 1.6 Tesla of flux, uh, which, uh, you know, basically what that means is if you've got a nice strong magnetic system there, it will interact in a very, um, in a very, um, uh, in a very uh, strong fashion with the actual electrical current that's passed through the voice call, and so control the, 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 the diaphragm very well. So it will be able to start and stop very quickly the, the diaphragm when it's moving. Uh, besides that, what they've also mentioned that they've got as a kind of a, a feature for this uh, is that they've uh, designed a sort of a waveguide um, on the front section of the IEM to try and avoid or try and do away with the distortions caused by high frequencies uh, and, and, and therefore making the treble a little bit smoother. And I can, I can attest that whatever it is that they've done, I've done know because I haven't opened the IEM obviously, it seems to be working because when I show the graphs, you'll see that they graph very similar to the other IMs that I've selected, yeah. But yes, the treble does sound smoother, uh, and and basically that's that's you know the, 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 those are the characteristics like the the the, the things to that are worthwhile calling out. It's got a 32 ohm impedance, uh, 170 decibels of sensitivity, so it, it's it's nice. I mean, it's um, it's easy to drive. Uh, obviously, it benefits from being powered. There's two two two, two um, finishes. There's this finish which is like more reddish, and then there's one which is more green on the faceplate. And the IEM does look nice. It it does look very premium, very light. Okay, but it does look it does look very very premium. It does look very nice. Um, and that's basically it. Okay, so what have I got yet to to compare the the puller with the PA01? I've got here the conch, the Torian conch, the Simgot EW200, and the EPZ Q5. Why these IEMs? Well, because these are the IEMs, in my opinion, which are kind of the reference IEMs to go for at around this $50 price bracket. Although this is significantly cheaper, this is you can get this for about $35. This is about $39.40. This is even available at $30 now, and this is about $50. But anyway, they're all within the same kind of price. 
Um, and this to say what? That the Pula has, uh, uh, has its, cut, its work cut out for it. That's the reality. I've selected only three, but there are plenty other IMs that I could have uh, included here. Yeah. I could have included the TKZK Oranos, which has you know been a kind of a forgotten hero, but it's a very, very good driver. Very good IM, sorry. Uh, I could have put in the T3+, Plus. I could have added the, the C2 as well. Um, I could have added the, the Zulin Yao Z4. There's, there's a lot of IEMs which are uh, at this price point, which are very, very good. And the differences between them uh, at the end of the day basically boil down to what accessories the IEM actually brings. You know, cable, is it uh, modular, not modular, how many tips. How, and it's, it's, that's where the differences then lie. Talking about that, the IEM here that takes the cake straight away is a conch. Not only does it bring a nice cable, okay, it's got a nice cable. It's modular with all the tips uh, for that modular cable. It's got the nozzles as well, which do change the signature of the IEM. Uh, brings the case. I mean, honestly, TRN with the conch has, has gone to town. They've cut no corners. DLC driver. Uh, really nothing that I can fault it with with regards to its accessories the SimGot EW200 well we know we know the SimGot what it's about the EW200 basically shares a lot of the genetics of the uh, of the EA500 uh, some even prefer it over the EA500 because it's got a little extra base although I find them to have about the same base um, LDM I believe it's an LDM what they call it, or LDE um, um, uh, driver, which is a, a hybrid driver designed by them in-house, and then finally the EPZ, which uh, you know was crowded, was was clouded with a bit of controversy because of the design of the IEM and this and that, and it's copying Meze audio and so on and so forth. Um, but they've also got a, a, a nice driver inside there. I believe it's a CNT driver. Um, so and and they all have the same sort of sound, which is a Harmon kind of tune. Um, the puller is the one out of all of them that differentiates itself in two ways. It differentiates itself from the other three, first of all, because it's got a little extra base. Although graphically they look, they look almost identical, it's got a little extra extension at the lower end. And because it's an LCP driver, I assume as well, it's just got that little extra depth it's not a huge thing but you will you'll pick up on it on songs like for example uh, savannah uh, from uh, john line i'll post it afterwards in my description so that you can listen to it you, you you that song's got a very nice bass line to it another song which you'll notice that is the train song by holly cole you'll notice that it's got just that little extra weight on the bass especially on the lower lower registers as compared to the other three um, the two here which are probably the the brightest sounding ones are the EW and the Q5. Uh, the ones which are the warmer sounding ones are the Conch and the Puller. Um, having said that, and, and going back now again to the bass, the bass is probably this one that's got the, the, the deepest bass over all of them, but not the quickest, the what the quick, the one with the quickest bass. I'll give that to the SimGot EW200. Uh, the differences are not big, but that's got the quickest bass, and the one that's got the leanest bass is the P5, the the Q5. Okay. In terms of the mids, they all are very equal. They all have the same sort of pin again. It's that interaction between the bass and the mids that then differentiate them, and tonally you can pick up differences. Um, the ones that the, the, the two that probably have the tonality and the timbre that I like the most because it's a little bit more on the warmer side is the conch and the puller. Okay, these are the two that I prefer their tonality and timbre. Not huge differences to the EW or the, or the, or the Q5, but it's the ones that have the better, the best tonality for me. Um, the ones which have the most detailed retrieval, the most twinklies and sparklies, EW and the Q5, definitely, the yes, the Q5. Um, the best female vocals out of all of them, I would give it to the EW200. The ones which have probably the most natural sensation of, 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 of vocals. And I would say 
an, uh, a, a tie between the conch and the, and the pula. Male vocals. Uh, I will give the male vocals to the conch and to the pula. Uh, although there's nothing wrong with the male vocals yeah, on the Q5 or on the EW200, mind you. Uh, in terms of extension, the one that sounds, let's say, the most natural in, ex in, in its extension is the pula. I have to give that. It's not a huge difference to the EW200 or to the, or to the conch. But it's the one that sounds the most natural in its treble extension. This sounds very comparable as well. Um, and this is just a little extra brighter. That's all. The one that sounds a little bit more artificial is the Q5. And, and mind you guys, when I'm talking now about these differences and I'm saying this one's got this, this. We are talking really very, very small differences and differences that I personally pick up that might be completely different to you guys. I tried to make sure that I was using the same tip and actually was able to get the same tip to work on all IEMs in the same way uh, perfectly so that there's that commonality there. Okay, the cables, that's not, that's not really relevant, but in terms of the tips, they are all using the same tips precisely for there to be a more fairer comparison with regards to all of these things that I'm talking about. Um, in terms of then the sound stage, the one that probably has the best sound stage, I would say is the is the Simcot next this one and then these two. Uh, it just feels the biggest with the Simcot. Okay, the 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 better the best imaging again, I would give it to these two. Um, not that these are far behind, but these two have got the best imaging uh, and detailed retrieval. Like I said, uh, the Simcot and the Q5 as well take the the the. the 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 prize in that aspect uh resolution they all are very i mean it's i'm gonna be repeating myself but the differences are very very minimal but if ultimately i have to give a winner a winner for the resolution i'll give it to the ew200 as well <coughs> so it might seem like the ew200 is taking all the technicalities or taking the majority of the things but it actually isn't it's just down to wanting to kind of uh, position them slightly although the differences are like i said very very minimal you know uh, and that's basically it so just a quick recap in terms of the base extension at the lowest end this has got the best base extension not a big difference but this is the best and these two are very close second that's the thinnest mids they all are very comparable i would say that the one that comes across with the nicest mids ultimately are these two okay although this one comes also very close so very very this one the mids just sound a little bit thin sometimes all right as compared to these three by itself amazing the q5 by itself amazing mids uh, i mean you when you listen to these two only they sound very very similar in just the, the here because you have a little bit extra bass snappiness it just makes it a little bit more engaging than the, than the q5 but the differences are minimal in terms of uh, in terms then of treble the, this has got the the most smooth treble the easiest treble to live with uh, this one uh, the the best in terms of detail and easy to live with the the q5 the treble is very good but it can become ultimately a little bit fatiguing um the the the, the conch is kind of also is in, be in between these two you know it's it's an easy treble to live with it's not a it's not a harsh treble or anything of the sort uh, so that's it in terms of then it's it's um i mean uh, uh, genres that it can play well I, I honestly i didn't find anything i i th i i listened to a whole bunch of songs on it and i didn't really find a particular genre or a particular song that it didn't do well it, it it i mean i will remember from by toto very good it, it, it's it's it, it conveys that 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 uh, sense of space that the beginning of the song has easily. Not not a problem. Um, if I this if I learn the, the change the world from Eric Clapton as well, beautiful. Um, the, you know, that, 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 there's nothing aggressive about the way that it puts the song to to you know that uh, re replays the song. Although, for example, on the Q5 with this particular song, that initial part of the song can get a little bit too much. But not a, not an issue there on the on the on the puller. Um, I will always love you by Christopher Goes. Fantastic as well. Very nicely done. Um, so you know it, it's. It, I think the biggest problem with the puller, as with many IMs that are released uh, currently, is that you know there are many IMs which are not really worthwhile. They they money and they just don't play well. But when the IM is good, which is the case of the puller, its biggest issue here will be price and what it brings and what it offers for the price. 
And in that aspect, okay, it's got a decent enough cable, but I think that, you know, if they had maybe given a modular cable, that would have been a plus point, something that would kind of make people think twice about it. Uh, the tips, yeah, okay, they're fine. And just then the overall packaging, the, what, what, what greets you with the eyes the first time you see it, they should maybe just work a little bit on that because, I mean, to just get a case... You know, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it gives you the sensation that this is kind of a, a very DIY kind of uh, uh, IM and not a, 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 an IM which is properly executed, properly done. Um, and that's it, guys. I mean, like I said, that's really the only obstacle. It's ultimately what it offers you for the price. Sonically, it's on on par with any one of the other three that it that, I, that is here, uh, and definitely, definitely will become a, a recommendation. From now on, if if what you want is a, a smoother treble with a little bit more extra bass extension, definitely this is the way to go. If you like, if ultimately you like the most detail as possible and to be the most clinical, then the Q5 is the way to go. Uh, if you want uh, two uh, IMs which are very good in betweens, then you know the Q, the Conch and the EW200. If you want the best value for money, definitely the Conch. The Conch, in terms of what it brings accessories and so on, uh, also very good. The, the issue with the conch, uh, the, well, there are obviously issues with any one of them, but the issue with the conch and with the Q5 is the fit. The fit can be a little bit of a, of a, of a problem because it's got this kind of a shell, like I mentioned in my review, which is a half between a, a halfway between a, a normal bullet style and a, and, a, and a normal IM, and kind of, you know, the angle yeah, should have been a little bit more pronounced so that it would uh, fit into the ear nicely. In that aspect, the, the EW200 is flawless, it's the one that fits the best, and the puller actually doesn't fit too bad as well, it's got a nice angle from the shell into the nozzle, so it actually does fit quite nicely. Anyway guys, I'll show you now the graphs and we'll wrap it up. Hi guys, and welcome now to the uh, graph section for the puller PA01. And anyway, let me show you now here first the graph of the puller. Okay, so this is the graph of the puller PA01. Um, and this is using the KB07 tips. Let me just quickly show you here using the stock tip. Why not? I also have it here, so might as well. Uh, there we are. There we go. Apologies. Uh, that's it. That's with the stock tip. All right. <coughs> so the stock tip, you have a little bit more of a dip here, in this area between six and eight k, uh, and the graph for the most part looks very similar to the actual stock graph that they they give. Okay. So anyway, this is the the graph that I used is the the one with the uh, KB Euro seven tips, and as you can see, it's loads of base. I mean, we are talking about a gain for the base of 12 dBs for the mids of about 10 uh, but because the majority of this energy is all here below 100 Hertz it doesn't really you know there's no real bleed into the mids or any bleed that's gonna hamper let's say the performance of the vocals and so on in my at least in my opinion and then the pin again is nice and progressive it peaks at around three and then it still goes up slightly but this can be more of a couple of things than anything and then it's got that dip and and this whole area yet yeah, the end yeah i think it's down to the to, to the fact of that uh, wave guide that they're using inside it it makes it graph so you know in this manner Anyway, that's the graph of the uh, of the uh, Puller PA01. Uh, this is the graph of the uh, TRN Conch using the same tip as well, uh, and you can definitely see less space, uh, but it kind of also got the very similar um, uh, um, way of do handling things uh, uh, up top so, and. and you notice that it, they both sound on the more warmish side, okay? Uh, the next one now is the EW200. Let me just change the color here, okay? Remove here the TRN and let's put the EW200. EW200 as well, again, the same situation, not having the ultimate bass extension, although the bass is a little bit snappier, a little bit quicker. Um, a little bit more of a, of, a, of of energy here in this two to three two to four k area, 
um, and you you can hear it there's a little bit more energy here also the fact it doesn't have the same sort of bass on back on the back does uh, make this area here sound a little bit more open more 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 detailed okay but the differences are really really very minimal they're, they're not significant trust me uh, and then so I've shown you the conch uh, yes I've shown you the conch and now this one uh, where is it where is it where is it uh, EPZ yes this one yeah and finally this is the EPZ let me remove this one yeah this is the graph of the EPZ um, again less uh, less base than the, the puller but uh, it actually sounds uh, way thinner than the graph would lead you to believe uh, the, definitely the the the, the Q5 from EPZ okay and let me just take this away the Q5 from EPZ and the Simgot they are the ones that are the brightest sounding the, the, the curious thing here is that although the Simgot does have a little bit more upper mids than the Q5 uh, for some reason it doesn't come across that way it actually comes across the other way around so the, the Q5 comes across being a little bit brighter all right but anyway if I put all the graphs up now so that you guys can see um okay so trn conch up there oh let me just change the color so you can actually see it better let's make the conch purple all right so we've got the conch the epz and the the sim got all three together and you can see that they are almost identical the difference that you notice is like i said earlier is more down to the tonality of each and that then makes the sound come across being a little bit more detailed and and maybe brighter while on the conch it's a little bit uh, a little bit warmer a little bit more 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 lush okay and then finally the, the puller um, also the in the equation and as you can see they all graph almost identical I mean the differences are uh, minimal all right you it, it's more of a difference in then what you listen and the tonality and so on than anything and just for the sake of uh, of the fun of it I'm just going to show you here let me just take away these I'm going to show you here the Simgot versus the tensium oxygen that's a that's an interesting one for you guys there so that's the oxygen versus the tense gym uh, versus the the same got ew 200 okay let me actually put the oxygen in in a color that you'll notice it more let me make the oxygen red okay set so that oxygen versus same got ew 200 using the same tip all right um and this is now where is it the oxygen sorry i forgot the oxygen there I'm going to show you the oxygen with the puller with the puller there we go actually must make the puller now black otherwise you guys won't see it all right there we go so that's the puller in black versus the oxygen in red um, you definitely do notice that the puller has got more bass and you can hear it as well uh, and then up top uh, the oxygen is what it is we, we already know but anyway i just thought it was a bit interesting to just quickly share this with you guys all right anyway guys um this has been my take here on the on the puller pa01 uh, definitely an am worthwhile considering if you are in this price bracket uh, and you know it's like i've already mentioned before it's down to the accessories and uh, and so on that will dictate your, your your final choice and in that aspect the conch is the good one or the better one but sonically they all are very very comparable with very minor differences between the the, the, the four of them all right guys as always like and subscribe any questions please feel free to ask thank you now bye bye